to go over sets, complex numbers, SADs, uh, irrational numbers, irrational numbers, and binary operations because like the days are too few, the topics are a lot we need to revise. So because of this, we'll be sending a lot of uh, a lot of questions for us to to get to work out, and we shouldn't be tired. We we just practice a lot and a lot. And I know the best is going to come out. Okay, let's have a look at this first question which we have on sets. Remember, there is no calculator to be used. Given that the sets A which is from negative 3 to 2, we've got B, you've got C, and the universal set you've got from negative 10 to positive 10. Now, you want to find each of these which are given and represent them on the number line. The first one you want to find is A intersect B complement. Okay, so the best that we're going to take in this case, when you've been, when you are working out sets, the best approach you can take is Work with them systematically, like one by one. For example, the first one you have here, okay? The first one, which is A, intersect B, complement. The first thing I'm going to get the one which is looking a bit complex, that is the B complement. So let's get, we need to represent this on a number line. So I'm going to write a number line or draw a number line. Now the first thing that should be in your head is, what is the universal set? At times, the universal set is going to be a set of all real numbers, but here the universal set has been restricted. You can see it is only starting from negative 10 to positive 10. So I'm going to get, I'll put negative 10 here. I'm going to put positive 10. So the universal set is just between these two numbers. Now you can see that in the universal set, we are not including negative 10. And in the universal set, also, we are not including positive 10. So that you don't forget, just put open circles here because you are not including these two numbers in the universal set. Now, since I'm looking for B complement, I'm going to go to the set B. You can see the set B starting from 0 up to 7. So I'm going to write 0 and then 7 there. Okay, look closely. 0 and 7 are both in the set B. Why am I saying they're both in the set B? Because we have got this kind of brackets. We've got closed interval brackets. Okay, like that. This closed means they are part of the set. Now, if I want B complement, it means these two values are not going to be part of the set. So, since they're not going to be part of the set, I'm going to put an open circle here and also an open circle, right? So, imagine if it was like this. It was 0, 0,7. This was the set B. Let me put it like this. This was the set B. And then I need B complement. It means in the complement, 0 is going to be there because it is not in B as you are able to see. And then 7 is not going to be there because it is already in B. So I'm now just going to join this part like that and also this part like that. So this set I found is a B complement. Okay. If I find the B complement now, remember we want to find the set what? A intersect B complement. So I've already found B complement. The next thing that I need to put is the A, the set A. So I'm going to just get the set A. You can see that the set A is starting from negative 3 up to 2. So negative 3 is going to be somewhere here. And then 2 is going to be somewhere here. Now negative 3 is not being included, so it's going to be open. While 2 is being included, so it's going to be closed there. We are going to shade. So this is the set A. That's the set B. Now, we want the intersection of these two sets. A intersect B complement. So just look for the common region of these two sets that you're able to see here. So I think it is clear we're able to see that here up to here, these numbers are going to be common between these two sets. So that will be the intersection of these two sets. Now, notice that negative 3 is not in A, but negative 3 is going to be in what? It's going to be in B because it's part of this line. So obviously, intersection, you want what is common. That means that negative 3 is not going to be part of the set. Okay, the intersection. So I'm going to put an open circle. 
and then you look at the last number which is zero you can see that zero is not in b complement though zero is in what is in a so same since it is not in b complement it can't be part of the intersection so i'm going to put an open circle so that is going to be a intersection b complement and please be sure to ask because they might just change something like mostly the same way the exam was that is how the this exam is going to be now they don't change a lot it's just the numbers that are go the figures are going to change you can try to check out the previous exams the way they've been coming the way the exam comes the same way the, the supplemental exam is going to come you just change some figures and some simple things okay I'll repeat if you've got a question just open your mic and speak it out okay we've worked out the first one already now the second one you want to work out a minus b minus c complement now this one is going to become a bit of trick okay though it's not difficult but it will just be a bit of trick so the first one we need to remove the minus as we are able to see so we have got a minus b minus c complement we need to apply the rules of says that we know the de morgan's law the associative law the distributive law the commutativity law so the first thing that i'm going to do is you can see this minus which is here i'm going to change you know that if you've got x minus y this is going to become x it changes to intersection and then the second thing the second thing here is going to carry a complement so same in this case we're going to have a the minus will be, it becomes intersection b minus c so this is the second thing is going to carry a complement but remember it also already has a complement right so that is how it's going to become now you need to know that when you've got two complements they are they more like cancel themselves so just going to have x so this will just give you a intersect b minus c these two complements you are able to see they more like cancel themselves out and then also what is inside we can change the minus to intersection so that will become again a intersection b intersection c so the c will carry a complement please never put the complement outside the brackets because we are talking of what was inside the brackets there so we have simplified this when I was looking at the marking key for for this question, just simplifying up to this point, we are going to carry some marks out of that five marks. So that means if you fail to simplify, you you might not be able to get anything because if you fail to simplify, it will be very difficult for you to find the set itself. Okay, now that we have simplified, we can now get to put we can now get to understand what they are saying now always oh, start with the complex part i'm going to st first start with this complex part we have got c complement right so i'm going to get the set remember always first get the universal set very very important i'm going to get the universal set and put it here from negative 10 up to positive 10 because we're not including negative 10 and positive 10 i'll just put open circles here okay and then since i want c complement i'm going to get the set c the set c we can see starting from negative five up to positive one now you can see negative five is part of the set c so in the complement it will not be part so i'm going to put an open circle and then you can see for one it is not part of the set c because we have got an open circle i mean it is an open bracket since one is not part of the set c is going to be part of the complement so at one we are going to shed and then we'll just join these this is going to be now the c complement okay and then we want to intersect it with b so i'm going to get the set b and intersect where is the set b the set b we can see is starting from zero up to seven so zero is going to be between negative five and one and then it's going up to seven now you can see also for b we are including both zero and seven so we are going to shade here we are also going to shade here what are we looking for we are looking for the intersection of these two sets 
So where are they intersecting? We can clearly see they are intersecting here. This is the only common region. Okay. So we can now put that on another number line. The intersection of B and C complement. It is starting from 1 up to 7. Now you're able to see that 1 is in C complement. 1 is also in what? In, uh, in the B. So it's going to be part of the intersection. You can also see that 7 is part of B. It is also part of C complement. So obviously it's also going to be part of the intersection. So these are right as B, intersection, C complement. We are done with this part. Now, we are also put now the A. What is A? A starting from negative 3 up to positive 2. Now, we are not including 3, but we are including positive 2. Okay, this is our A. Again, we look for the intersection. Look, we are interested in the intersection. So the intersection is this part. So for me just to shade this, I have almost gotten everything. Now all that is remaining is for me to represent now the set. So I'm now going to get the actual one which I was given. I'll say therefore A minus B minus C complement is going to be, we can see it is only one and two. Okay. One is in both sets. Same two is in both sets. So this is going to be the set, and we would have gotten all the five marks there. Are, are we moving okay, or there is someone who is left out? All right. Okay, now we can look at uh, part B. We are done with A. The sets A, B, and C all intersect, and U is the universal set. Shade the part that is described uh, in the Venn diagram by B union A intersection C complement complement. Now, the first thing is A, B, and C all intersect. So let's, let's try to put all. We have got A which intersects with B, and it also intersects with C. They all intersect, okay? A, B, C. Now, you also have the universal set, which is U. Now, you want to shade the region described by B, union, A, intersect, C, complement, complement. Please, you, you will not be able to manage to, to, to shade or do any operation if you don't simplify a set. So the first thing I'm going to simplify, you can see this complement which is outside, I'm going to distribute it to the inside. I'm going to distribute it to the inside. So what is it going to become? It will be B union. The A is going to carry a complement. Now, every time you distribute a complement, according to De Morgan's law, the sign is going to change. It becomes union. And then you have got C complement. So this C complement is going to gain another complement. Now, when you have got two complements, that will just give you a C. Those two complements is more like they cancel out. Right. Now we'll start shading them systematically. Here, the first thing that we are going to do is we shade A complement. Okay. The A complement, everything that is outside A, that is A complement. Sorry, it has gone in A, but shouldn't include a, a, just everything outside a like that that is the a complement and then if you see union c union means also shared c okay we are also going to share the offset c that means it's also including that region that is in the set a all right and then we are done with this in brackets now, what we have shaded also now, union B also shade the set B. So I'm also going to shade the set B like that. 
So the of this region you are able to see is what we are calling B union A intersection C complement complement. So the only region that is remaining is this region that is in A. This region here. That's the only region that is remaining. The rest has been shaded. So sets are really simple if you take them stepwise. Otherwise, if you want to do it all at the same time, it will trouble you and it will give you a lot of problems. And the thing is, every simple mistake you make, you are going to lose some marks. And trust me, you don't want to lose even one mark. You need it. So that's why you need to take it slow and just move step by step like that. And you are going to see it so interesting. Now, let's make it nice. Let's say instead of us being given... Of course, we've already seen, we've shaded the one that we are given. Let me just say, if it was a bit different, instead of having unions, we had an intersection. So let's say after simplifying, we had B, intersection, A, complement, union, C. How would we have shaded this set? So here is A. Here is B, and there is C. Okay, the first thing that we are going to work out is what is inside here. B, co A complement union C. Now, A complement union C, I want you to understand this, friends. Let's say this is A, this is B, and I'm going to put another one. This is A, this is B. This is A, this is B. If you are talking of A complement union b and a complement intersection b you need to know a good difference between these two a complement union b means shade what is outside a and also shade the set b so i'm going to shade everything outside the set a and then i'm going to shade the set b including that portion that is in the set a okay i'm just shading the whole of the set b now, A complement intersection B means shade what is outside A, but it should be in B. So for this one, you only shade what is outside A, but it should be in B, only that region. So this is the difference between these two. So same here, A complement union C means shade everything that is outside A, right? Everything that is outside A. Also shade the set C. So I'm also going to shade the set C, including that region that is in the set what? In the set A. So we are done with this one. Now after shading that, okay, I've, remember I've just shaded the second part. So you've seen the region that has remained is just that one in A. And now, intersection B. In other words, this region that we have shaded, where does it meet with the set B? You only need where it meets with the set B. So where does it meet with the set B? You are able to see that where it meets with the set B is only this region, including also here. Okay? Where it meets with the set B. So what we have shaded, but where it meets with the set B. So... The shading is only going to be this thing I've put in red. I hope you are able to see only the shade, the one in red. So that means we're going to rewrite again and say, okay, this is the set A, this is the set B, this is the set C. A, B, C. The only region that we're going to shade is this one, including B. You also go in some A and C, but... You can see there's a part that is remaining here and also this region is remaining. If you just shed anything else, you are going to lose marks. Do we have anyone who has got a question? Or it is making sense? Do we have any question? I again advise, please just be be very free. Okay, that is on the sets question that we had for the first one. Now you also have 
Question C. Now this one is on SADS. SADS. You want to express 2 minus 3 square root of 5 divided by 1 plus 2 square root of 5 in the form A plus B square root of C where A, B, and C are rational numbers. Or to work this one out, all we are going to do is to rationalize the denominator. Just that. Rationalize the denominator. So we are going to multiply on top and down by what we can see down. Down we have got 1 plus 2 square root of 5. Just change the sign on the middle. That becomes 1 minus 2 square root of 5. Even down, multiply by the same 1 minus 2 square root of 5. Now start multiplying. This 2 multiplies with the 1, that will be 2. This 2 multiply with the negative 2. Now, a constant to always multiply that number that is outside the brackets. Always. You can't multiply this to you are able to see with what is inside. No, don't do that. It always multiplies that number that is the outside. So that would be 2 multiplied by the negative 2. That would be a negative 4. And then you have got a root 5. Okay. Same. This negative 3 will multiply with this one. That will still be what? Negative 3 root 5. And then now this negative 3 root 5 will multiply with negative 2 root 5. Now for this one, those numbers which are outside are going to multiply themselves. So I've got a negative 3 is going to multiply with a negative 2. That is going to give you a positive 6. And then these numbers which are inside the roots are also going to multiply themselves. So I'm going to have square root. And then what is inside 5 times 5? That will give you 25. But you know that the square root of 25 is a 5. So just write a 5. In other words, when you're multiplying the same thing, square root of a times the square root of a will just give you a. That's the meaning. Square root of 5 times square root of 5, that will just give you a 5. And then you are going to go in the denominator. Now, since in the denominator we are multiplying a number by its conjugate, the very simplest thing, instead of you doing the cross multiplication, 1 times 1, 1 times negative 2 square root of 5, just get the first number that you have. That is a 1. You square it. Okay? Always put a minus. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether this first one was negative, this one positive, or it was the first one which was negative and then the second one positive. Always put a negative here. Always. As long as it is a sad, always put a negative. And then you get the second part which you had. That is 2 square root of 5. And then also square that. And you've seen I've put it in brackets. It's very, very important. So here you've got 6 times 5, which is the 30. And that 30 is a constant. We're going to add it to a 2. That is going to give you 32. And here you've got negative 4 root 5, negative 3 root 5. Please, when you are dealing with sad, you only add or subtract what is outside. In this case, you are going to subtract negative 4 and negative 3. Just these numbers which are outside. That will give you negative 7. And then the root 5 will still remain like that. Okay? In the denominator, we've got 1 squared, which is simply 1, minus. You are going to say 2 squared. That will give you a 4. And then square root of 5 squared. Whenever you've got a square root, you square it. The square root and the square will cancel. So just remain with a 5. And you know 4 times 5 is a 20. So this will give us what? 32 minus 7 root 5. And then 1 minus 20. That will give us negative 19. All we are going to do is now we are going to split this. The negative 19 is going to be the denominator for both 32 and negative 7 root 5. So that will be 32 divided by negative 19 minus 7 square root of 5 divided by negative 19. By this negative that you are able to sit down here, you can just put it on top. So that will be negative. I don't know if 19 can go into 32. But that is going to be negative 32 over 19. This negative and this negative will give us a positive. And then you're going to have 7 square root of 5 over 19. So you've expressed it in the form A plus b square root of c. Any question, please? Okay, I'm hoping it is okay.
I'm hoping it is okay since I can't see any question. Now we have got binary operations. Very simple also, but it can be a bit trick. Okay. So the binary operation star on set of real numbers R is defined by A star B being equal to A minus B squared minus 2AB. Now a binary operation is an operation that acts on two numbers. Okay. If let's say you've got a set A. And then it has got elements. Let's say it has elements 1 and 0, like that. If you want plus or minus or times or division to be a binary operation on this, you should get these two, you add them. For example, plus, if you add any, any two combinations, they should give you always a number that is part of this set. What do I mean? I'm going to write 0 and 1. I also again write 0 and 1 like this. I'm going to split it like that. So I'm going to get the operation that I want to see if it is a binary operation. For example, if I want a times, I'll put a times here. So 0 times 0, that will give me 0. 1 times 0, that will give me 0. 0 times 1, that will be 0. 1 times 1, that is going to be 1. So you can see that these, these which are here, these are the results. You only have 0, 0, 0, and 1. They are all part of this set, meaning that multiplication is a binary operation on set A. A binary operation is an operation such that when you perform it, the answer that you are going to get is always going to be part of the set that we are given. If we said plus, let's try plus, you see what is going to happen. You have got 0 and 1. You've got 0 and 1. Now you are adding. So 0 plus 0, that would be 0. 0 plus 1, that would be 1. 0 plus 1, that would be 1. 1 plus 1, that is going to be a 2 here. Now you can see these are the results. But 2 is not part of the set, the set A. We only have 0 and 1, meaning that plus is not a binary operation. Why? Because one result that we got after adding wasn't part of the set A which we were given. Right? So that basically that is a binary operation. Now, just like sets have got properties, commutative properties, associative, distributive, and all those. Same with binary operations, since these are also operations on numbers. So you want to show that the operation is commutative. Whenever you're talking about commutativity, if I say 1 plus 2, it should be the same as 2 plus 1. This is the meaning of commutativity. So if I say A star B, it should be the same as B star A. If I see that this is true, then I'm going to know that this operation is commutative. So let's do that. We've been given A star B. What is A star B? It is A minus B squared minus 2AB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute. In other words, I'm going to remove this square. So the A minus B squared, I'm going to write it two times and then start crossing and multiplying. Okay, start crossing and multiplying. What you are going to get, if you do that, we are going to get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. If I just expand this. And then remember at the end we have got what? Minus 2ab. Okay, we have got like terms this one and this one. These are like terms. So I'm going to say a squared. I'm going to also get the b squared. Now we've got negative 2ab, negative 2ab. That will give us negative. 4ab. So this is a star b. I'm also going to work out b star a. Now what does b star a mean? In other words, we've just changed direction. It means in this operation, at every point where you are seeing a b, you are going to put an a. At every point where you are seeing an a, you are going to put a b. Why? Because you've changed their directions. Okay? You've changed their directions. So, what is it going to become? Where we are seeing an A here, we are going to put a B. Minus where we are seeing a B here, 
we are going to put an A. And then we square that. And then minus 2, where we are seeing an A, we are going to put a B. Where we are seeing a B, we are going to put an A. Like that. Again, the B minus A squared, we are going to write it two times. B minus A, B minus A. When we do that, we cross multiply. We are going to get B squared minus 2BA plus A squared. Remember, we also have a minus 2BA at the end. Okay? Again, we put like terms. Now, I'll just start, I'll write first this one, A squared. And then I'll write this one, which is a B squared. Then negative 2BA, negative 2BA, that will give you a negative 4BA. Now, 4BA is the same as 4AB. So, you can see that these two are what? They are equal. So, you conclude, since A star B is equal to B star A, therefore, the operation star is commutative. You've shown like that. That is how you show that an operation is commutative. Since A star B is equal to B star A, therefore, the operation is commutative. Okay, are we, are we together? Do we have any question? Is there anyone who is left out at any point? All right. That means we are good. Okay, we can now work out the next one. We've been given that find negative 1, star 3, and then star 2. Well, since this is binary, binary means you work with them 2 by 2, okay? So you start with the, the same thing that has been given in the brackets. That's the one we are going to start with. Now look at this. When you have got A star B, this is the operation that you are going to get. In this case, you have got negative 1 star 3. So you, you more like just put it like this, negative 1 star 3. Meaning that where there is A, at every point where there will be A, you are going to put negative 1 because negative 1 has taken the place for A and 3 has taken the place for B. So you are going to say this is going to give you, okay, where there is A, we are going to put negative 1 minus you are just following this where there's b you are putting a three remember it's supposed to be squared minus two where there is a you put a negative one where there is b you put a three you are done with that i'm going to close so I have, i'm done with it negative one star three and then remember the result that we are going to get star two okay so just simplify what is inside there Negative 1 minus 3, that will be negative 4. We know negative 4 squared is positive 16. Negative 2 times negative 1, positive 2. Times 3, positive 6. Okay, like that. And then we have got star at 2 still. So I've got now 16 plus 6, which is a 32. Sorry, not 32. I don't know what I'm... 16 plus 6. That is a 22. So I've got 22 star 2. Again, we have got two things here. We again now go back to the what? To the operation that we are given. Okay? Back again to the operation that we have. Now in this case, A is going to be 22. And then B is going to be 2. So 22 star 2. Is going to be the first one we have is 22 minus 2. Remember, it's supposed to be squared. Then minus 2. The first one is 22. Then the next one, the B, is the what? Is the 2. So this one, 22 minus 2, that will give you 20. 20 squared is the 400. Minus 2 times 22, that will give you 44. 44 times 2, uh, times 2 that will give you 88. So just do the subtraction. 488. Remove a 1 from a 4. It remains a 3. Put on 
with zero it becomes a 10 you can remove a one it becomes a nine you put here 10 minus 8 that is a 2 9 minus 8 that is a 1 and then a 3 so the answer therefore is going to be 3 12 so that is going to be it also for this one is there any concern does anyone have anything they want to ask or say are we good okay let me confirm are we good All right, good. We have another one here, B1. Express Z, which is equal to 4 plus 2i over 1 minus 2i squared in the form A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers. Now, this is a complex number. Whenever you see an I, right? So that's a complex number. Now, the first thing you are going to work out is what in the denominator you have 1 minus 2i squared. So this is this should be the first thing for you to work out. 1 minus 2i squared. And how do you do that? The same way we do it. Write it two times and then start crossing and multiplying. Now, a very simple instance. Me, I don't write it two times and start crossing and multiplying because it would waste my time. Whenever I've got a minus b squared, just get the first one here, which is the a. You square it. And then get this power 2, multiply with the a, also multiply with the negative b, that would be negative 2ab. And then get again the b, you square it, so that would be positive b squared. So this is the form. So same here, I'm going to get the first one, which is the one I square it, that would be 1. And then I'll get the power 2 times the first number, which is 1 times the negative 2i, that would be negative 4i. And then I'll get the next number which is the negative 2i, I square it. So the negative 2 squared, that would be 4. And then i squared. If you don't want to do this, you can do the crossing and multiplying, but trust me, time is not there. Like you've seen, that time is not enough. Now, we also know that i squared is equal to negative 1, meaning that this is going to be 4 times negative 1, which is what? Negative 4. Okay, so that would be 1, this negative 4 will bring it here because they are like terms with the 1, then minus 4i. And this will give us negative 3 minus 4i. Now that I've simplified the denominator, I can now write it. Z is equal to 4 plus 2i. In the denominator, instead of writing what you've been given, I'm going to write a simplified form, which is negative 3 minus 4i. And then from here, what am I supposed to do? I want to write in the form a plus ib. I need to conjugate. So I'm going to multiply on top and down by the conjugate or the denominator. Conjugate means just change the sign of the imaginary part. The imaginary part is the one which contains an i. So don't change the sign of the 3. Even if it was like this, 4i minus 3, you want to find the conjugate of this one. It is not 4i plus 3. This is wrong. You change the sign of the imaginary part. So it will be negative 4i. Maintain the 3. Okay? With its sign. So to multiply by the conjugate it will be negative 3. The sign changes to positive 4i. And then even down, negative 3 plus 4i. So now start crossing and multiplying. This 4 is going to multiply with the negative 3. It will be negative 12. Again, the 4 is going to multiply with the uh, positive 4. That will be positive 16i. Okay? And then 2i is going to multiply with the negative 3 to be negative 6i. And then again, the 2i is going to multiply with the 4i. That is going to give us positive 8i squared because we've got i multiplying with an i. In the denominator, just like on sides, when you're multiplying a number by its conjugate, get the first one. You square it. Now, for sides, you always put a minus here. But for complex numbers, please always put a plus here. We don't care whether it is this one which was negative, this one positive, or the other way around. Always put a positive there. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to just get a 4. Don't get the i. Just get the number in front of the i. You square it. Just that. Okay? 
just that. So this is now going to give you 8, 8i squared. Now the reason as to why this always becomes positive, this thing I've put here becomes always positive is because of the i that is on 4. Like this 4, if you square it, 4i you square it. The i squared will always give you a negative 1. I was supposed to put a negative here just like on sides, but because of the i, it's a negative 1. Negative times negative, that gives you a positive. That's why we always put a positive there. Okay, so the i squared here is going to give us a negative 1. So 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. So that negative 8 minus 12, those are like terms that will give us a negative 20. Okay, and then we have got 16i minus 6i. That is going to be positive 10i. In the denominator, we have got negative 3 squared, which is a positive 9. Okay, that is a positive 9. And then 4 squared, that is a 16. So we've got 16 plus 9, which is a 25. So I'm going to distribute this denominator to both. That will be negative 20 over 25. And then plus 10 over 25. Don't forget the i. Now just reduce this. A 20 can be divided by a 5, even if a 25. 5 into 20, that's a negative 4. 5 into 25, that's a 5. 5 into 10, that is a 2. 5 into 25, that's a 5. And then you put an i. So we've expressed in the form a plus i b sum there. I hope there's there's no question. Please, if there is, I always continue speaking this. Don't be shy to ask. It's the best way of learning. Okay. Now we have got part two. You want to express zero point. Uh, Two, five, three. Now look, it's only the five and the three which are repeating. You want to express them in the form A over B where A and B are integers. So in other words, you want to show that this is a rational number or you want to express it in form of a fraction. So please, the first step, always let X be equal to this number that you've been given. 0 0.253. First thing first. The next thing, check if the decimal point is in front of the numbers that are repeating. What are the numbers repeating? You've got 5 and 3. Always make sure that the decimal point is in front of the numbers which are repeating. Okay? So it should be in front of 5. That is the first number repeating. So I need to move the decimal point from here up to here. So what am I supposed to do? I'm going to call this one as equation 1. So I'm going to move the decimal point one time. But how do I move it one time? You are going to multiply equation 1 by a 10. Okay, because you only want the decimal point to move once. Multiply 1 by 10. These are steps you need to be following. So you start x times 10. That is going to be 10x. And then 0 0.253 times 10. The 2 is going to be here. And then the decimal point here. Then we're going to have the 5, 3. Remember, the 5, 3 is still repeating, so we're going to put a dash on top. This is going to be equation 2. After the decimal point is in front of the number that is repeating, make sure that the decimal point goes behind the numbers which are repeating. And what numbers are those? It is a 5 and 3. Since the decimal point, we've already taken it in front. So how many decimal numbers does it have to cross for it to go behind? 1, 2. So I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 100 because the decimal point is supposed to only move 2 times. Multiply 2 by 100. So if I do that, this is already a 10. 10x times 100, that is going to be 1000x. Okay, 2.53 times 100, that is going to be 253. The decimal point is now going to go at the end there. 
Now, since the 5 and the 3 is repeating, I'll just write it again. Just to make sure that the number after the decimal point in equation 2 is equal is the same as the number after the decimal point in equation 3. That's why I put a decimal there and then just written the 5 and the 3. Okay. And then from there, then you look at those two equations, one which has got the decimal in front of the numbers repeating and the other one that has the decimal just behind the numbers which are repeating, you subtract them. So in this case, we're going to say equation 3 minus equation 2 because those are the ones, equation 2 has got the decimal in front of the repeating numbers, equation uh, 3 has got the decimal behind the repeating number. So I'm going to write equation 3, 1000x is equal to 253.53, the dash on top. And then equation 2, that is a 10x, is equal to 2.53, the dash on top. <coughs> so we are subtracting these. So I'll start with this side, 1000x minus 10x. You know that should be 990, 990x. Okay, now this side, the 5, 3 and the 5, 3 here will cancel out those numbers which after the decimal, like they are the same, they'll cancel out. So all we're going to do is 253 minus a 2. Okay, which two, these two that you're able to see here. That will be 251. Just divide both sides by 990 to remain with x. x is going to be 251 over 990. You've expressed it in the form a over b. You get all the marks. And let's say there's need for you to reduce. But even if you don't reduce, you just lose one mark. All right? For not reducing. But I don't. there's no number that can go into 251 and 990 without leaving a remain. So don't leave it as a decimal again. For example, you write on top that x is equal to maybe 24.1 uh, over 90. No. You should not have a decimal again in the number that you found. It should be... Those should be integers. They should be numbers without a decimal. Okay, so we've expressed in the form that is needed. I hope it is okay. So we have almost done every question on the topics that you're supposed to do apart from i've not seen a irrational number here i mean an irrational number but the rest we've done an example so question three given that a and b are sets express a intersection a complement intersection b complement complement in the simplest form all right so here you have got a intersection a complement intersection b you have got a complement close another complement you want to simplify this in the simplest form the first thing i'm going to look at the complement that is at outside the complement outside so this complement here i'm going to distribute it with what is inside so the a is going to gain a complement this sign here is going to change into union okay you have got a complement intersection b you have got a complement you are going to have another complement that has come from the outside now when you have got two complements what happens they cancel themselves so just remain with a complement union a complement intersection b okay now that i'm at this point i'm going to distribute this thing here a complement union you are you are seeing I'm going to distribute it to what is inside the brackets, just like the way we do the cross multiplication. So it will be a complement union. The first thing that we are able to see inside, which is the a complement, I put the brackets. And then I'll get the sign that is on the middle here, which is the intersection. I'll again get the a complement union. I'll get the second thing that you are able to see in the brackets, which is a B. Now, whenever you see a number, union that same number it will always be that same number so a complement union a complement is going to be a complement okay 
And then you have got an intersection, which is this one. Then you have got A complement union B. All right. So we are at this point. Let's see. A complement intersection, A complement union B. Now you need to know which one, which one is the bigger set between a complement and a complement union B. Obviously, a complement union, like union means combining. It is going to be bigger. So if you don't know how to proceed from this point, I advise you to make a very small sketch of, uh, of a Venn diagram. Where you've got a set A, you've got a set B. You, this is a set A, this is a set B. I'm going to start with this second part that is a bit complex. A complement union B means shed what is outside A together with what is in B. Okay, everything outside A is there. Together with the set B, I'm also shading the set B. Like that. I've shaded, remember, everything outside together with also the set B. And then now, where does that intersect with what is outside A? Okay? I need to shade also what is outside A only. What is outside A only, I'm going to put it in black. Now I want to in, uh, to find the intersection of A complement and A complement union B. So where is the red portion intersecting with the black one? So you can see that this is basically what? This is basically A complement, if you are able to see. Like where they are meeting, where the black line is meeting with the red line. It's just outside A. So the simplest form of this one is just going to be A complement. Okay. In other words, when you've got a set A, which is a subset of the set B, Okay, like A can go into the set B, and then you are looking for the intersection of these two sets. Then the answer will always be that small set. So A complement can go in the set A complement union B. So if you intersect these two sets, the answer will always be A complement, because A complement can go in the set A complement union B. I don't know if this is if this is fine. Okay, do we have questions? Do we have questions? Yes, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, you can just uh, say it again you you are not audible Okay, just a minute then. <laughs> 